Hi everyone and welcome to DIY with Nadia. Today I'm participating in an amazing challenge that's called For the Boys. And basically a few of us YouTubers got together and we are crafting for the men in our life. Whether it be our sons, our husbands, in my case, it's my hubby. And I got a few things that I have made for him and I really hope that you get inspired by my crafts. And then after watching my video, there's a link down below and just click on that and you can see what other crafters uh, in this little collaboration did for the men in their life. With that being said, let's get started. For this project, we are using this metal football wreath form from the Dollar Tree along with three packs of the mesh tubing and I'm using the brown one from the fall section. And to decorate, I will be using some felt that I have on hand and some from the Dollar Tree. So all we're going to do is we're going to weave the mesh tubing in our football. Leave a little bit of a tail, inch to two inches, and then start weaving in and out. Now obviously this is going to take a while because the mesh tubing is long. If you want you can cut in half if you want but here is what it's going to look like. You're just weaving it in and out, in and out and around the edges. That's it. And this is what it looks like. This is one full pack. And then I'm going to take the second pack for that middle section and the third pack for the left section. When one of my mesh tubing ends, I'm just taking the second one and tying them together in the back and then continuing to weave just like we've been doing. Now I'm just taking a little bit of glue gun and that little tail that I had, I'm just hot gluing it in place. Now I'm completely done weaving the wreath, but I did leave myself about 30 inches of mesh tubing to put around the intersections. Now here is what I mean. I'm showing you in orange. There are three sections on the football that are hard to cover by weaving. So I decided to take this extra tubing that I have and I just hot glued the mesh tubing on top of those sections. I decided to decorate my football with the Chicago Bears logo and that's because I live in Chicago, my husband's Chicago Bears fan. So all I did was I printed out the logo and I'm cutting out that inner portion that is going to be orange and now I'm tracing it on an orange piece of felt and I'm cutting it out. The Chicago Bears logo has two outlines so first the logo is orange then it has a white outline and then it has this navy blue outline so what I'm doing is I just hot glued my orange logo to my white felt and this felt is from the Dollar Tree cutting it out leaving about 1 8 inch of the white felt showing now I'm hot gluing the logo to my navy blue felt and same thing I'm leaving about 1 8 inch or about 3 millimeters around so you could still see the blue now I'm just eyeballing two white felt strips and then also two orange ones and I'm going to hot glue those vertically to the sides of my football wreath. Now for the Chicago Cubs wreath. I'm using this wreath form from the Dollar Tree and all the meshes also from the Dollar Tree. Now I decided to do eight of these and basically you see me laying out four which means I will be using four at a time. You don't have to do this. Three is really sufficient but because this is Chicago Cubs and because the colors are red, white and blue I wanted to make it look a little bit less like 4th of July and wanted to give a little bit more of that blue. So that is the only reason I'm using four rolls instead of the three. To get started, I'm going to start laying my mesh out. 
First, I'm going to get a layer of blue, then I'm going to add a layer of white, then red, then blue once again on the outside. This is one of the simplest wreaths you can make with deco mesh because all you're doing is you're gathering at the tip, attaching it to the wreath, and I do like using zip ties for this and just making little loops. I attach my loops to the wreath using those two middle rows of the wreath. I laid out my deco mesh facing the curly side down. That way when you're making those loops, it's just easier and it's natural for the mesh. Now I'm just grabbing this measuring mat from the Dollar Tree because I want my loops to be about 8 inches. And I just keep it right there, right underneath my wreath. That way it's so simple, I just keep on turning it and just measuring 8 inches, bam, I'm bringing it together. That's it you guys, that is that easy. I did 6 loops per section, each loop being approximately 8 inches long. And then this is going to be enough for half a wreath. The 4 deco mesh pieces are going to be enough for half of the wreath. Then you're going to get your next four and that'll total an eight. But as I said, I only used four because I needed to put in more blue. You can definitely do this with three and it will be full. I promise you guys, it'll be beautiful. And here is one section completed. For now, we're still going to spread them out, but for now, here's one section completed. Here, I completed a little bit over the three sections, and the only reason I stopped is because I ran out of my white deco mesh, and here is what it looks like from the back. Here, I'm showing how I attach an ending of one set and a beginning of another. I crisscross them, as you can see, and I'm taking my little zip tie, and I'm going to tie it to only one of the metal rings and I'm just going to make sure that it's nice nice and tight like very tight because then I don't have to worry about it and I move on with making my loops At this point I'm cutting off all the little ziploc tails and I like to leave about a quarter to half an inch of a tail in case I need to adjust and now it's time to separate the loops I'll be honest this is my absolute favorite part. I literally am smiling right now just thinking about doing it. I absolutely love it. And I just like to open all the loops up where, for example, the white is going to be on the left, then on the right, then in the middle. Same thing with the red. Just put them in different places and just open them up and it's so much fun in it. And it's going to be so satisfying and absolutely stunning. Now let's move on to make the Cubs sign. I grabbed one of those stuffed up covers and this is the smaller out of the set of two that it comes and painted with chalk white paint. And this is in linen white by Rust-Oleum. Now I printed out a Cubs logo and I'm cutting it out in sections. To start off with, I traced the logo itself. Then I'm cutting out the Cubs C and tracing that. For the letters, what I'm going to do is an old school technique where I grab a pencil and just doodle on the back as much as I could. And then I'm tracing with the pen right onto my sign and then just going over it with a pencil so I can see it a little better. To make it easier for me, just a little bit, I grabbed an eraser and erased it because I could see where all the lines go, but I wanted it to be just a little bit lighter because my white paint is already painted and I will be just filling in with the color paints. For my paints, I'm using a... I will list the paints that I'm using down below, but basically, if you're interested in the paints I'm using, I will list them down below in the description box. But basically, I'm just painting the Cubs word in red and the outside circle in blue. my sign for a permanent hold 
I'm using a very generous amount of Mod Podge and just spreading it around the whole sign. I also wanted to mention that yes, you can just print out a logo, a colored logo, and you could use Mod Podge to attach it to the stovetop cover. Our color printer is not working at this moment, so I decided I'm going to go for it with the paints. Using lots of caution for this part, grab an awl or something that's sharp like that and make holes on both sides of the sign so we can just grab a chenille wire, cut it in half, and attach it that way to the wreath. If you are not comfortable doing that, that's fine. Just grab your glue gun and attach the chenille wires with a glue gun. But keep in mind, those might not hold on metal as well as doing this technique. But as I said, do what's comfortable and make sure you use safety. Now I'm grabbing six more of these chenille wires because the ribbon that I grabbed for this part, I got 11 pieces out of it. So I'll be using 11 of these half cut uh, chenille wires. And what I'm doing it is face side up. I'm bending the ribbon forward and then just using a chenille wire and just making a little kind of like a little pom-pom and that I will be attaching to the wreath. I got this ribbon at Joann Fabrics and I will try to find a link to it and attach it down below if I can. If not, I will find a similar one on Amazon and link that. Before attaching the ribbon to my wreath, what I like to do is just lay them out on the wreath form itself and then just attach it. That way you know that your ribbon is evenly spaced throughout the wreath. What did you guys think? I hope you liked the DIYs that I made for my hubby. And don't forget to click the link down below so you can see what other creators did for the men in their lives. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys! Mwah.